and graduates, please take a seat. Welcome to the 2018 Adult Basic Ed Graduation and Volunteer Recognition Ceremony. Tonight is a very special night for so many students and their families. My name is Adam Holm. I'm the Executive Director of Community Education for St. Cloud Area Schools. As part of my role, I get the distinct honor to oversee the Central Minnesota Adult Basic Education Consortium, which means I get to help recognize all of you great students tonight. Tonight, we're going to take time to celebrate the class of 2018. Hillary Clinton once said at a graduation commencement, life is not easy for anyone. Sometimes you don't see the challenges on the outside, but every single one of us has those and everything else that goes on inside as well. Give it your all, dare to be all you can be. During these past months, you've challenged yourselves, you've navigated through lives that weren't always easy, and you've given it your all. Your presence here this evening says it all. We celebrate your efforts and accomplishments and know you're moving forward into a bright future. Congratulations to 2018 graduates. Assisting our adult learners in their goals are not only a group of education professionals, many of whom are here this evening, but also dozens of trained tutor volunteers who generously donate their time, talents, and energies to this meaningful endeavor. Our volunteers help us greatly to expand our capacity and to serve our adult learners more effectively. We are here tonight not only to celebrate our graduates, but also to say thank you to our volunteers for their many, many hours of dedicated service. I personally want to say thank you to our volunteers. Tonight we have a number of dignitaries with us. I'd like to pass the microphone and have them introduce themselves briefly say a few kind words, and identify their organization. Good evening. My name is Willie Jeff. I'm the superintendent of St. Cloud Area Schools. And on behalf of all of District 742, our heartwell congratulations to all the graduates. I'm Bruce Watkins, interim superintendent for Sock Rapids Rice. And to the graduates tonight, I want to tell you that in my lifetime, I've discovered there's a whole variety of paths and roadmaps to get different places. I'm glad yours led you here tonight. Congratulations. Good evening, good evening graduates, family. I'm Mark Houck. I'm with the Sock Rapids Rice School Board, uh, presently serving as chair. So thank you so much for your personal, uh, personal striving, striving to do better. Your drive got you here tonight, and let's hope that you can continue to that drive in the future. Congratulations. Congratulations. My name is Tracy Morris. I'm a member of the Sock Rapids Rice School Board, and I would like to be, say that I'm so proud of everybody that they put the determination to have this night come to be and take that same determination and move forward. There isn't anything that you can't accomplish. You got here. This is just the first step. Anything's possible. Congratulations. Hi, my name is Al Dahlgren. This year I'm serving as chair for the St. Cloud School Board. And to this group tonight, I want to say congratulations. You guys have come a long way. This is a great deal. It's a big deal for all of you. Uh, this is the first of three nights of graduations for us on the St. Cloud Board. We have Apollo and Tech following us. And whereas a lot of kids are going to be graduating in the next few nights, with those two graduations, most of those kids that are graduating expected to be there and were expected and were expected to be there. In this group, I find it so much more inspirational and so much more exciting of a graduation and it means so much more because you guys came back and made the hard choice 
but applied yourselves and really did something for yourselves. And I congratulate you for that. Hi, my name is Bruce Hanches. I'm also a member of the St. Cloud School Board. And uh, I would just say congratulations to the graduates and best of luck as you start your future uh, with your high school diploma. Congratulations. Good evening, my name is Bruce Mose. I'm a member of the District 742 Board of Education. I know how special a night this is for the graduates and for the families. Special for me in remembrance, 60 years ago this spring, my father got a GED. And uh, I was a young boy, but I remember that night. I remember how proud he was and how proud his family was of him, and I'm certain that that is the same sentiments in this room. Congratulations to all of you. Good evening, my name is Shannon Haas, and I'm a school board member with District 742. Congratulations, graduates and family. Thank you very much for allowing me to share this moment, a very proud moment with all of you. Thank you. Also a member of the District 742 School Board. Once again, congratulations to all the graduates, their families. I'd like to echo what uh, Chair Dahlgren said. I'm new to the board, two years maybe. This graduation means more to me, and I'm sure it means more to you. But it means more to me than the Apollo and Tech ones, because you guys have overcome many obstacles. So congrats. Good evening. Buenas tardes. Felicitaciones. Congratulations to all of you. My name is Monica Segura Schwartz. I'm a member of the St. Cloud School Board um, of Education. And I am very proud and excited of being here. And uh, this is my first time in this graduation, and I will miss it again. Um, this uh, is a great accomplishment, and I think that it's a really good time to celebrate and to be all together. Um, and I'm proud to be here celebrating with you and with your family. So congratulations to you graduates and to your families for being the support that you need to come here. Good evening, I'm Ryan Bukowski with the Sock Rapids Rice School Board. And um, this is my first time attending this as well. And I, I just want everyone to pause and remember the tenacity and the perseverance that it took to get this far don't ever lose that because you're going to end out utilizing it throughout your entire life and it will come in handy, I promise. Hi, I'm Nicole Wilkie, Community Ed Director for Sac Rapids Rice Schools and I just want to say we are so proud of you. We know that you've overcome many obstacles that have been said um, and we're just so proud of you and it's an honor for us to be up here tonight. Next, I get the distinct pleasure to turn the microphone over to Jane Stevenson. Jane is our volunteer coordinator, social worker, intake specialist, and overall does a terrific job recruiting, training, and supporting our ABE volunteers. Please welcome Jane Stevenson. Good evening. The great privilege to work with some extraordinary people. We have a large pool of volunteer tutors and teachers who share their time, talents with our students, staff, and we would not be able to offer such an expansive program as we do without them. One of the comments I hear from a number of our volunteers is that this is the best thing they do. They look forward to doing this. Um, it's their favorite thing to do during the week. Uh, we have tutors go back to school and pursue teaching degrees, uh, as well as some uh, college students have changed their majors to teaching English as a second language as a result of working with our program. According to the Point of Light study, volunteering helps build a more cohesive, safer, and stronger community, increase the social network between communities and neighborhood. It's a great tie into our District 742's mission and core values. Some of our highlights from this past year include 113 volunteers provided about 5,200 hours between May 2017 and April 2018. Based on an average of 2758 an hour from the independent sector, 
It's a financial value of nearly $143,416, as well as positively impacting our students uh, and connecting us to the community. This year, we had 49 new volunteers. We were at nine different sites, Discovery and Wake Park, Hillside and Sock Rapids, La Cruz Apartment Complex, working with Hands Across the World, Great River Regional Library, Belle Claire, Coleman Manufacturing, St. Cloud Technical Community College, and St. Joseph. We had 20 tutors go through a 12-hour training with the Minnesota Literacy Council. Uh, we had another 35 tutors that attended um, a brain, adult brain and language development workshop. Uh, we were able to work with seven service learning students from St. Cloud State, St. Cloud Technical, um, St. Ben's, and St. John's. And we had a work-study student um, and also another student that worked with us from Career Solutions. Our volunteers range in age from 18 to 91. Yeah. Volunteers act as classroom assistants, interpreters, do small groups, uh, citizenship instructors, administer assessments, and do one-to-one -one tutoring. Three of our volunteers from our organization were recognized this year at the Partners in Education Awards Ceremony. Ellen Hennigan and Annette Schoenberger are tutors at Hillside. Lois Johnson was a tutor at Discovery. And then the St. Joseph Cultural Bridges Group is coordinated by Diane DeVargas. And they started a program a little over a year ago in St. Joseph. And it's grown so that we actually have a morning program two days a week and an evening program two days a week. I'd like the volunteers who are here in the audience to stand and be recognized. ABE staff, the teachers, the administrative staff, our site coordinators, Naomi here at the Great River Regional Library, and Kelly at La Cruz, our diploma coordinator, Lori Leach, and our director, Adam Holm. I'd like to invite one of our teachers, <coughs> Joe Osgood, to say a few words about one of our longtime tutors. But as Joe comes up, first I'd like to um, recognize Joe for his outstanding accomplishments. Uh, he was recognized for, as a, a, received an award for excellent in volunteer engagement from the Minnesota Literacy Council and was recognized at the fall 2017 National Adult Basic Education Volunteer Management Conference. I'd like to present this certificate to Joe. surprised me with that. I wasn't expecting that. So, thank you. We had uh, one special volunteer who worked for adult basic education for over 20 years and he passed away this, this past spring. And I just wanted to take a moment to recognize him. His name was Father Ken Ergang. And if you have a brochure, you might notice him under the 3,000 hours category. Um, Father Ken was a, a personal pastor to Cesar Chavez, and he was also a role model for lifelong learning, curiosity, and, and just joy. Um, I'd like to share a quote that reflected Ken's life, and hopefully will speak to yours as you go forward. The purpose of life is not to be happy. It is to be useful, to be honorable, to be compassionate, to have it make some difference that you have lived and lived well. Ralph Waldo Emerson. So I hope you'll take these accomplishments today and move forward with your families and your lives and keep giving back to others. Congratulations. She's an idiot. Thank you. And it's my pleasure to get to introduce the speakers today. 
Now, we all know that everybody here has overcome lots of barriers to get here tonight and to be wearing that cap and gown. Um, but these four people that I'm going to talk about today uh, actually have one more barrier that they had to do, and that's the fear of public speaking, <laughs> just overcoming it. So we are so thankful that these brave souls have decided to share with us their life stories. And without further ado, I will introduce our first speaker from Sauk Rapids, and her name is Stephanie Lovett. Good evening. My name is Stephanie LaValley, and I'm a graduate of Hillside ABE. First, I would like to thank everyone for being here today for, to support all of us graduates. I'd also like to thank everyone at the Gulf Basic Education, because without them, none of this would be possible. And most important, I would like to congratulate my fellow graduates. Well, wow, I never thought I would graduate, let alone be giving a graduation speech. As I prepared for this speech, I brainstormed on what I would say. To be honest, I didn't know what to say. Well, as I kept brainstorming different ideas about what to say or how I would say it, I seriously was drawing a blank. All I could think about was how I thought I would never graduate. In fact, it got me thinking about the word never and how I used it. I used to say, I'll never find time to go back to school. I'll never get a better job and I will never graduate. I was stuck on the word never. But the truth is now, the word has changed for me. <coughs> Okay. <laughs> it has a more positive meaning to me. I have flipped the script on the word never. The word never has power. I will never give up. I will never quit. It is never too late. I found a quote that I would like to share, and I feel it's very fitting for all of us here today. This quote is from Mandy Hale. Never stop trying. Never stop believing. Never give up. Your day will come. And today, graduates, today is our day. Congratulations. Once again, I would like to thank everyone for being here, all the friends and family who have chosen to be here today. Thank you for your support. I'd like to thank all the schools and teachers who work so hard to help make the goal of graduation a possibility. And one message that I hope to convey is that it's never too late. And fellow graduates, we are all living proof of that today. Thank you. Oh, always technical difficulties. <laughs> The second speaker, and I'm just going to say your first name, my dear, because I don't want to slaughter it, is Veronica from Discovery. Good, good evening. 
My name is Veronica Bedoya de Diaz. I am from Guanajuato, Mexico. Uh, my husband and I, uh, the United States, had uh, many opportunities uh, for education and jobs. So we decided to move here in 2001. Also, we chose to live in Cold Spring, Minnesota, because it's, there is a safe place to raise a family. I know a little bit the, the English from my, from my classes in Mexico, but I forgot a lot of it. I know that learning English was really important for me to be successful here in the U.S. So I enrolled in ABE English classes in 2011 at McKinley School. Then, in 2012, I enrolled in Family Literacy Program. I could not have been able to continue my English classes because I don't have anyone to take care of my, my children. I found it difficult to keep up with my homework. when I got home, because my, my two children need, need me attention. I'm sorry. Also, when there's a lot of my place in family legacy, because my, because I had um, to stay home when my children, um, when, when my children were sick, in the family literacy program, I learned how to become a better parent. The guest speakers were interested. And they, they got it as tips like uh, preparing food, keeping children safe, <coughs> how to take care of ourselves. The teachers were so passionate with all children. When I was in Mexico, I was I was educated as accounting assistant, but the credential did not uh, transfer the U.S. So I decided to start my education over in this country. I was very happy to be an adult diploma program in 2015. And today my goal is that is achieved. I have to get high. I, a high school diploma is completed during my classes and AP. My ability to read, write, and speak, speak English has really, really improved. And I've been learning more computer skills. As for the future, I'd like to, I'd like to keep learning more English and continue preparing, preparing to, to go to the college to be the therapist for children with special needs. Thanks God and my family for supporting me. And thanks all my teachers for always being patient and teaching. And thanks, thanks my friends for always helping me. Thank you. Next speaker is Ernie Severson from Discovery. Hello, everybody. My name is Ernie Severson. I'm from Mexico City. I moved to the United States searching for security. I also hear the U.S. encourages diversity and women's rights. Thanks to my sister who was living in Minnesota at that time, an opportunity to move up opened up. In August 2000, I took a bus from Albuquerque to Minnesota. On the way, I noticed people from different cultures laughing and talking to each other, my family. It was heartwarming 
and I want to be part of that conversation. But I currently speak English. By listening carefully to the conversations, I learn how to order food, how to keep track of my bus during our stops, and how to find bathrooms, which is very important at the time. <laughs> By the end of the bus ride, I felt that I was ready to begin my quest to learn English. I enrolled the Family Legacy Program in 2015. I noticed the differences between education systems in different countries. I always had a problem with reading both in my language and in English. The teachers are discovering key strategies that make it possible to me to learn. However, whoever say the teachers shouldn't get personally involved with the students, let me say you are wrong. The reason why I'm standing here is because I'm surrounded by caring teachers. I will never forget how Carrie and Nikki helped me create a strong circle of security for my family. There are also good teachers in ESL. I never had a teacher who could get the students excited about math until I met Joe. My right teacher, Deb, she's so passionate about poetry and she will help you find the most profound words to write a poem or just to finish a paper. I thank Lori for pushing me to finish my diploma and the rest of the staff for that, so patient and help. All these teachers and staff are part of my achievement today because they took the time to know me and help me in my needs. Moms and dads out there, don't discourage yourself if you have kids, tons of clothes to wash, and full-time work because whatever you achieve in your life will be meaningful for your family and you. Don't hesitate if you are old because learning brings joy and enrichment to yourself. I will like with something the teacher Joe, my math teacher, told me when I was taking a test. He noticed that I was frustrated because at the time the only thing I could remember was that I forgot to turn off the craft pot at home. <laughs> he pointed his finger at me and said, don't give up. Thank you. Speaking today is Tina Marie Williams from South Rapids. Let's hope I don't mess this up, guys. We finished it this morning. Hello, my name is Tina Marie, and I have been asked to stand in front of all of you for this wonderful, special occasion to give this speech by one of my many inspiring teachers. What an honor. She tricked me. She did. I, I, I'm calling you out, Gretchen. No, I'm just teasing. In the past year, this teacher has been a source of light, laughter, in my life. After an update of my work, she came to me, if I remember correctly, and said in a low-key tone voice, graduation is near. Like a sarcastic threat, of course. We laughed together, per usual. I had a feeling that something would be following this just knowing this person. She came to me in a very happy, sing songy voice. Graduation speech equals your ticket to graduation. <coughs> she had me. This again was followed by laughter. I agreed with a sign me up, of course. I don't even know where it came from, literally. I just sang it. Anyways, I didn't put much thought behind it. It was only until afterwards that the sweat started gathering around my collar. The response was yes partly because her infectious, positive, and outgoing attitude, but also because once you are inspired by someone, and once you are agreed at to a task, you develop a new sense of self. It's strange, maybe a little bit of self-worth, maybe a new sense of direction. In that moment, looking back, I needed that direction more than I knew. For all that, I thank you, Gretchen. I see you. During this time back at school, I have learned more about myself than I have in a very long time. I'm sure you guys all have to. Early mornings, late nights, dirty dishes, beds to be made, clothes to be hung on. It's awful. Anyways, more than my teachers or peers could ever understand, I've experienced a loss. My mother, Nancy Williams, she's here in spirit. And I have also found love. Tommy Coleman, wherever you're out there, my supporter, my cheerleader, 
My companion, all that I could ask for. He's been there for the good, like graduation, the bad, like the loss of my mother, being the support team when I was a wreck. He's a great guy. And also through my defeat and my diagnosis of epilepsy. With some acknowledgments out of the way, let me please bring my attention back to you guys right here. <coughs> my eyes are on all of you, and you all look beautiful. My graduation class, let me share a little bit of what I have learned during this time of personal growth. Anything in this life that annoys you is teaching you patience. Anyone who abandons you is teaching you how to stand on your own two feet. Anything that angers you is teaching you forgiveness and compassion and the power to love. And anything that has power over you is teaching you how to take your power back. Anything you hate is going to teach you courage to overcome your fears and unconditional love. And anything you cannot control is going to teach you how to do the most beautiful thing sometimes in life, and that's to let go. Toxic is toxic. Friends, family, when toxic is toxic, you get rid of it. Another great thing I learned during this time at ABE. You see, my fellow peers, the difficulties in this life are intended to make us better, not bitter. It is so easy to forget this. It is so easy to point the finger. But every time they point the finger, we got three of those bad boys pointing right back at us. But each one of you stood up for yourselves and said, today is the day, dang it, with the baby's cry, with the crock pot not being turned off and everything else, you did it. You followed through with yourselves and your guys' dedications to your own needs. That right there is beautiful and takes incredible amount of courage. This is a point in life right here, moving forward. Let it not forget the point in this life is to grow. Never stop growing because if we do, we have given up on ourselves. We cannot do that any longer. We cannot give up on ourselves ever again. Even if it takes time, even if we don't know how, we have learned that we have community. We have people that we can outreach to. Yeah, it's embarrassing. Yeah, maybe we don't have gas money, but somebody's got a big heart. Somebody will be there to help walk you through it. As we can see, we've all done it. Finding yourself in this life is a journey that comes and goes. In moments of weakness, we can get distracted from our goals and from ourselves. But each of you before me have done it. Congratulations. Everyone in this room has made bad choices. We've all made some also choices. We won't get into that, you know. But as I look up onto you, I know that you guys have all fought some huge battles, but you've stood up for yourself and you've done it. Okay? All of you. I'm trying to look at each one of you so you know I'm talking to each one of you. Tonight, graduates, there is nothing to fear except the thoughts that run wild in our minds. Okay? We can chase them away by remembering to look at things as they are, not as we see them to be. There's a very big difference. Tonight, do not let the darkness of the next step cloud your thoughts. You can use your mind to see clearly now. You've made it through one struggle. We have to remember that our limitations are the walls that we have created and erect, where walls have never existed. Tonight, and from now on, we can say that we have walked the miles, we have cried the tears, we have given up and tried again, and given up and tried again, and we are now able to find the courage to stand up to one of these many walls and tear it down. Tonight, we will remember that we are not put on this earth to carry the weight of the world on our shoulders. We can learn to rest without always feeling obligated to others and learning how to put ourselves first for once. Don't let this be your last step. Everybody up here who said it, keep moving forward, even if it takes another five years, another 10 years, Whatever your forward is, keep moving forward. At this time, I would like to thank our school board, everybody who has taken the time to come out to give your two cents melts my heart because I know how much you mean it. Absolutely. From our teachers to our volunteers to the family members that I didn't even think I would see tonight to some friendly faces and maybe some foes out there, thank you for being here for all of us. Thank you so very much. And lastly, I have one final shout out and praise. I could do this all night, guys. My first speech was 17 pages. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Somebody that I have adopted into my heart, a woman who is strong, so strong, and some people don't ever take the time to see. She has seen me smile. She's heard me yell. She's wiped my tears. 
She's been a great mentor, a great friend. She's held my hand and kept my head high, my sanity at least at five. Denise Hooper, where are you? I don't know if she's around. Where is she? We love you. Speakers, thank you again for sharing your stories. They're very inspirational. Sorry about the technical difficulties. <laughs> so at this time, we have the presentation of diplomas. And to do that, we have Meg from Sauk Rapids, Amy from Freshwater, and Lori from Discovery. Graduates, when I call your name, will you please come forward to receive your diploma? <laughs> <laughs> yes, please stand. Dole Abdullah. Veronica de Doya de Dia.
Please move your tassel from the left to the right. Woo! 